The next question uh, is from Kunal and I'm going to divide it into two. First part, <coughs> he says uh, that he, he will shortly be moving to Canada. So can I continue to invest in mutual funds? That's part one. Yeah. Can he? Uh, he can. Okay. But uh, there are two ways of doing it. One is the illegal way of doing it is that, you know, don't declare to the fund that we have moved to Canada. <laughs> no, no, no. And if the money keeps moving from your same domestic bank account, uh, then it can. Uh, your money can well lie there what has been invested. But uh, fund companies are, many fund companies are declining, denying because of the FATCA rules of the US. Okay. And, uh, you know, if you are going to be a tax resident of any other country, then you have to declare that. Some fund companies accept money from the Canadian citizens, tax citizens, you know, tax residency. Okay. Hmm. Some companies don't. So your options can get narrowed. Okay. And the second part is, how is the compounding different in fixed deposits and mutual funds? Uh, compounding is happens in fixed income. You know, when you invest 100 rupees in a, and you do a deposit and it is compounded quarterly, so the three-month return is added to your capital and the next interest accrues on the okay. interest added. So your capital has increased. Okay. In case of mutual fund, there is no compounding as such. You know, we, we apply the formula because it is a capital asset. You bought something at 10 rupees and a mutual fund becomes 12 rupees in two years time. So you, you can apply the formula to figure out what is okay. the return. But you know, it is not compounding. Basically, you are buying an asset and the price changes over time. It is expected. There are certain kind of funds where the change in value is, is very much in line with, you know, or is, is like that of fixed income, like liquid fund. Mm. It generates 7% return and it is spread over 365 days. Okay. Or in case of a, another debt fund or a fixed mm. maturity plan, it generates 9% and it's spread over three years. And so, you know, you, it will look like, you know, 27% or 29% annualized return. Because the underlying is like that of a fixed deposit. But in case of equity, it's a capital asset. You have bought the ownership of a company. It is worth 500 rupees today. And in two years time, it can become 700 rupees or mm. it can become 350 rupees or whatever. So we apply the formula to understand what the rate of annualized rate of return is. It doesn't compound.